Hi everybody, so I wanted to bring a book review today for a book called Clown in the Cornfield, Friendo Lives. This is a sequel and the first book was just Clown in the Cornfield and that was based on a small town that economically was struggling and there's killer clowns. I mean, I don't want to spoil anything if you haven't read it, but this is the sequel to that book and I was sick last month um, and the beginning of this month a little bit, so I have been reading like a fiend so I have a ton of reviews to bring um but I finished this a couple weeks ago and it just came out a couple weeks ago and I blew through it um because I I really really enjoyed the first book so the first book I I actually rated three stars out of five and it wasn't because it wasn't good it was it was awesome the story itself was kind of generic but the actual horror aspect and gore in the book was so good that it was like a guilty pleasure kind of book. I loved it. I thought it was great. I rated it three stars just because of the ending and because of the the overall story did kind of feel a little like we've seen it before but I still really really loved it so when I heard that there was going to be a sequel I was super super excited. If you don't know what Clown in a Cornfield is about, it is about basically exactly what it sounds like. There's a cornfield, there's clowns, and there are killer clowns, and they're attacking the kids of, of the town. I'm not going to get into why that happens, or how it happens, or who the clowns are. I'm not getting into that because that is major spoiler territory, but there's killer clowns, and I love clowns. So Clown in a Cornfield was like a dream come true for me. So Frendo is, is the clown in the story and he is the mascot for the small town that this book is set in. And I actually really liked um, the beginning of this book because it takes place away from the small town. The main character basically leaves and goes to college. So I really enjoyed that there was an aspect of the story that was removed from the small town because the small town is a character in and of itself in the first book. The small town that this takes place in, which is called Kettle Springs, basically its own character. These events would not take place if not for Kettle Springs existing. So to kind of remove the main character from that small town uh, was actually kind of interesting and, and cool because you see how the events of the first book affect her. Her name's Quinn. Um, and how it kind of haunts her, even though she's totally removed and very far away from the small town that this takes place in, from Kettle Springs. What I did like about this sequel is that the story begins and the chaos begins almost immediately. I would say maybe about 30 pages in and all hell breaks loose. And I really, really liked that. There were a few things about Clown in a Cornfield 2 that fell a little short for me. I gave this two and a half stars. It was really enjoyable, fast paced. I really enjoyed it. I couldn't put it down. I was completely into this story. But there were a few things that kind of fell short, which m made me not enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the first one. I'm not getting into spoilers or anything like that. But the first book was very aware of the kind of story it was. It didn't take itself too seriously. So the first book is kind of like when you watch a show or movie like Scream, where when you watch Scream, you know it's not a cinematic masterpiece. It's murder and it's gore and it's, you know, psychological warfare and like all, all these kind of horror tropes combined into one and, and that was how the first Clown in a Cornfield was, it knew exactly the kind of story it was. I feel like the sequel lacked that sense of humor. I feel like the author took it a little bit more seriously than the first book, which is fine, but when you're dealing with a story that is already kind of outlandish and unlikely to happen in real life, that little edge of sense of humor that supports that whimsical, you know, there's killer clowns everywhere, you know, running through a cornfield. When you remove that aspect of the story, it doesn't pack quite a punch because I feel like in this story, the author really tried to make it more realistic. And I think when you're in a slasher genre, I don't think realistic is the way to go. Um, I really think you should have fun with it. So I didn't like so much 
of the slasher part of it or the killing in this story. That was the best part of the first book was that fun over the top horror slasher type stuff. So the other thing that I didn't quite like so much about it was the character development. So in the first story we meet Quinn, the main character, and supporting characters who are Rust and Cole. And in the first story, we, we get to know them pretty well. The book isn't necessarily like character driven or story driven. It's definitely focused on that horror aspect, but there are parts of that story where we get to know the characters. They're in a traumatic experience. They're trying to survive this onslaught of just a massacre. And um, we definitely get to know them pretty well. And by the end of the story, there has been character development from the beginning to the end. Now the sequel takes place a year after the events of the first book, and that's totally fine. A lot of sequels in horror films and books take place on the anniversary of the first events, but things happen in that year that we don't know about. And when the characters kind of, with the exception of Quinn, I'm talking mostly about Quinn's father, Rust, Cole, and their relationship. When we're reintroduced to these characters, they've changed quite a bit over that year. And that's fine, but I didn't like the changes that, that took place. I feel like they didn't make sense with the characters from the first book. I'm not gonna get into details or anything, but I just didn't like that character development. And that, that lasted the entire book. Even up until the end, they became characters that I didn't like very much. Not Quinn. Quinn was fine. But Rust, Cole, and Quinn's father, who's also a supporting character, I didn't like the way that their stories developed and how they ended in this book. I really didn't. It was a strange choice, I think, maybe for the drama aspect and again to add to the story but I didn't find that the story gained anything or benefited from the changes that took place. And then of course we have new characters introduced. For the most part I, I liked them actually. I really enjoyed the, the new characters. There is a young girl, a teenager, who was there in the cornfield in the first book and she is also present in this book and, and we didn't really know too much about her in the first book so to meet her in this one and see again how the events affected her and then her role in in the series of events that takes place in this sequel um i really liked her her name was jerry i really 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 liked jerry i thought she was awesome um and you kind of see her evolution f from being this scared teenager who has no idea what to do in these situations to being like badass by the end of it. That was really cool because one of the things I loved the most about the first book was how badass Quinn was. To have like a female character who's not only the main character but who can like carry the whole book on her shoulders. I loved that. And we kind of had like a mini Quinn in this book. So not only did we have Quinn but we had Jerry and that was really 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 cool. So as far as the newer characters I really enjoyed them. I think that they added something really good to the story and I think that they added something interesting. You know, there's new dynamics. I liked that the characters in this story were mostly separated into smaller groups. I thought that was that was a great choice. There are two other things I did not quite like about this story. Um, again, I'm not getting into spoilers, but the ending of the book was rather predictable. I predicted it from about halfway in. So at the end of the book, something major is revealed, and I felt that in the middle of the book, that this thing was going to take place. I'm sure a lot of people are going to see it coming from a mile away. The last thing that I had an issue with in this book was a really bizarre choice. In the book, every chapter is from a different perspective. First book was like that, this book is like that, and that's fine. But it got a little weird for me because most of the book is happening at the same time. So that means basically if, if something was happening in chapter three and we go to chapter four and it's from somebody else's perspective, we pick up with that new chapter at the exact same time that these events in chapter three are happening. So you're, it's chronologically accurate, like it's happening all at the same time. But at the end of the story, and I don't know why he chose to do this, and I did not like this, it really bothered me. By the end of the story, things change. And now, instead of it being all happening at the same time, we would have a chapter and things would be going on like all hell would be breaking loose and then the next chapter would be like 10 minutes before those events so then you were kind of reading like 
preludes to what was happening so it changed from this perspective of like everything's happening at the same time for the entire book and then all of a sudden at the end now it's well this is what's happening before what you just read so that was an interesting choice I don't know why he chose to do that because I mean it was just a little confusing that's all I mean you pick up on it pretty quick and you understand because it's a pretty basic thing but it's just one of those things where you kind of get into like each book in my opinion has its own rhythm um which is one of the reasons why I, I struggle to read more than one book at a time because I get really into the rhythm of a book and so when these kind of changes to the structure of the book take place especially at the very end it kind of disrupts it for me um, so it was kind of like a, a weird choice. I'm not sure if it was intentional. I don't know if he didn't realize that that took place, like that that was happening. I don't know if like the editors did not pick up on it or like I said, if it was intentional or not. I don't really know what the intention would have been because you just, you could have written the whole book like that. But that's something that bothered me in this book. I know you're probably thinking, did you like anything about this book? Yes, I did. Um, I, I really enjoyed the, the pace of the book. I think that it went really quickly and I liked the political statements made in it. There were definitely some parts of the first book that were political, but this book really took it there. You know, he doesn't outright say anything political, but you could definitely see that it was influenced by certain political events that have taken place since the pandemic began. So, you know, there's definitely aspects of politics in this book and I really liked what he had to say on that. Again, it's not actually verbally said, it's just the way that the story develops and the, and, and things that are revealed at the end. Um, they're definitely inspired by politics and I like the way that he portrayed that without so much giving an opinion but just showing it realistically. I think I can give you an example without spoiling anything. In the first book, Quinn and Rust and Cole, they are the heroes of the first story. And in the beginning of the story, we kind of see that conspiracy theorists online think that they are not the heroes, that they are the villains of the story, and that they actually admitted the massacre with the intention of being viewed as the heroes. So there is definitely comments about like fake news and and this mob mentality, conspiracy theorists, this kind of community of people that we've seen really flourish in the last couple of years um, or last handful of years, really. So I enjoyed that aspect of this book. The slasher part for me felt a little short. There was not much gore or anything like that, which, you know, OK. So I definitely enjoyed this sequel. I think it was it was decent. I mean, it wasn't a terrible sequel at all. I would still love to see the first book and this book made into movies. I think they would be really fun slasher films. But despite the things that I, I do have issues with with this book, it was really fun. It was fun to return to Kettle Springs, to re-meet Quinn and Cole and Russ and see everything that's kind of happened and then to be thrown back into this horror show. It was really fun. I'm, I'm happy I read it. I will say one thing that I missed greatly in this book was the relationship between Quinn and, and her dad. In the first book, I think that was one of my favorite parts was this heartwarming relationship that they had and that added a lot of heart to the story. It's not that it doesn't exist in this book, it's just that mainly the beginning and then Quinn is on her own. So that is something that I missed in this book but other than these few couple things really, I, I really did have fun reading this. I couldn't put it down, I was really excited to see where the story went, how it was going to evolve and how it all ended. The ending is decent enough and satisfying enough to me to where, you know, I don't think it needs a third book. I, I think in the afterword, he actually, the author jokes about there being a third one because he basically said, you know, I'm sure people are shocked that there's even a sequel to the first one. So he makes a joke about there being a third one. I don't think this needs a third one. I don't. If he writes a third one, I'll read it though. I'll read it. Two and a half stars. It's not terrible. It's It was enjoyable. I'm glad I read it. Was it as good as the first one? No. Are there things that I would change? Yeah. But it's not terrible. 
So that's clown in a cornfield, friendo lives. And yeah, I did, I did match my makeup to this today. Yeah, I did. So yeah, so the next book I think I'm going to review is Fairy Tale by Stephen King, which literally just came out last week. And I'm about halfway through it. And I'm loving it so far. So let me know if you'd like that review. I have a ton of books that I need to review. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I hope I didn't spoil anything. I tried really hard not to. So yeah, Stephen King fairy tale will be next. Let me know what you think. Have you guys read this? Have you read the first one? Are you going to read this one? Let me know. And let me know if you enjoy book reviews because I'll do more. I've, I read a lot and I have a lot. I do have a bookstagram where I post my reviews and I also have Goodreads where I post my reviews. I started a blog a blog where I'm posting my reviews. Um, so there will be a written review on this that's like a little bit more detailed than me just talking, but definitely check those out. I'll link them below. But yeah, so this was my review of Friendo Lives. I'm gonna make sure to do my makeup to match every single book. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review and I, I, I hope you're looking forward to future reviews. I haven't filmed book reviews in a long time, um, but I'm excited to get back into it. So yeah, I hope everybody's doing well and I hope to see you in my next video. So thanks for watching guys, bye.